President Trump embarks on his first official overseas trip today. His first stop is in Riyadh, and he'll, from there he'll travel to Tel Aviv, Rome, and Brussels, where he'll participate in a NATO summit. The president has been critical of the alliance and of the financial commitments member states have made to it in particular, and that'll be one subject of debate at the meeting, which my next guest will oversee. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg joins me now from Brussels, and there are, as I understand it, sir, two big agenda items at this summit. Burden sharing, what countries contribute to NATO and counterterrorism. Let's take them uh, in kind. The U.S. Secretary of State says he wants to see these countries make their commitments by the end of the year or outline plans to get there by the end of the year. How feasible is that, do you think? How reasonable an expectation is that? That's absolutely feasible because we are now discussing concrete proposals on how we can agree uh, on the concept of national plans outlining how the different NATO allies are going to make good on the promise they all made back in 2014 uh, to stop the cuts in defense spending and then gradually increase and then move towards spending 2% of uh, GDP on uh, defense. Uh, and we have already seen that NATO allies have uh, actually started uh, to increase uh, defense spending. They still have a long way to go, but they have turned the corner and started to move in the right direction. There is so much on NATO's plate at this point. There's a migrant crisis. There's the issue of counterterrorism. How frustrated are you that so much focus has to be uh, on funding, that we are talking so much here about how uh, NATO defense is funded? Defense spending funding is critical because we need the funds to uh, finance all the different activities uh, we do as the alliance. And uh, NATO has to provide both what we call collective defense in Europe, responding to a more assertive Russia illegally annexing Crimea and destabilizing eastern Ukraine. But we also need to be part of the uh, fight against uh, terrorism, stabilize our uh, neighborhood. And to do so, we need to invest more in defense. Uh, uh, after the end of the Cold War, uh, NATO allies uh, reduced defense spending, and that's absolutely understandable because uh, when tensions are going down, it's possible to reduce defense spending. But now tensions are increasing again, and then we have to be able to increase defense spending again. Uh, the President of the United States spoke at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy this week. He said, quote, I will strengthen old friendships and seek new partners, but partners who also help us, not partners who take and take and take. I don't have to do too in-depth an exegesis there to interpret that he was talking about NATO. How damaging is that kind of rhetoric when you hear that? Well, President Trump has clearly uh, stated to me uh, in several conversations uh, last when we met in the White House in April last month that he is strongly committed to NATO uh, and that has also been the message from his uh, security team, from the Vice President, from Secretary Mattis, Tillerson uh, and uh, McMaster. And uh, this is a commitment which we don't only see in words but also in deeds because uh, the United States is now increasing its military presence in Europe for the first time in many, many years. At the same time, uh, all allies understand that we need a fair burden sharing and that's also the reason why 28 allies agreed uh, that those who are spending less than 2% of uh, GDP on defense have to uh, increase and they have started uh, to move in the right direction. What are you hoping to hear from the President of the United States uh, this week when he speaks to, to you and allies gathered in Brussels? I hope and I expect that he will uh, reiterate his uh, uh, strong commitment to uh, NATO. Uh, but also, of course, his expectation that NATO should do more in the fight against terrorism and also uh, invest more in, uh, in, in defense. And uh, I expect so uh, because that has been his message uh, since the uh, elections and also because strong NATO is not only good for Europe, but a strong NATO is also very important for the United States. Two world wars and the Cold War have taught us that stability in Europe is also important for prosperity and security in North America. And we have to remember that the only time NATO has invoked our Article 5, our co Collective Defense Clause, was after an attack on the United States, 9-11, uh, 2001, and we have been engaged in Afghanistan, our biggest military operation, 
as a direct response to an attack on the United States. There was a piece in Foreign Policy magazine I want you to respond to. It alleged that this summit is going to be different because of the participation of President Trump, that speeches are going to be shorter, they're going to be limited, that there won't be a detailed declaration to follow the summit. Can you confirm that those two changes are in fact being made? And if they are being made, it's because of the participation of President Trump. It's totally wrong, uh, the whole uh, story, because um, uh, this meeting is uh, a normal meeting. It's conducted and organized in exactly the same way as we organize uh, and, uh, and conduct other NATO meetings, other summits and other ministerial uh, meetings. Uh, it's true that it's not, not going to be a communique or a public statement, but that was also the case when we had a similar meeting uh, uh, when George Bush was a newly elected president back in 2001, because this is not a full-fledged NATO summit. This is a meeting where we have a new U.S. president meeting uh, all the other NATO uh, leaders. Uh, but it will be an important meeting, uh, a focused meeting, because we will focus on burden sharing, defense investments, and on uh, what more NATO can do to fight uh, uh, terrorism. Talking with the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg here on Bloomberg Television and Bloomberg uh, Radio. Uh, defense ministers were gathered in Brussels earlier this week and they discussed NATO possibly joining the coalition fighting the Islamic State. Do you expect that issue is going to be resolved by the conclusion uh, of this summit on the 25th? NATO already provides uh, support to the coalition fighting uh, Daesh or ISIL. Uh, we provide support with our AWACS surveillance planes and we train Iraqi uh, forces. The question is uh, whether NATO can do even more uh, uh, and also whether NATO uh, should join the coalition and be a formal uh, member of the coalition. Uh, some allies are strongly advocating that because it will be a strong expression of political support and to also uh, increase our uh, ability to coordinate uh, with all the NATO allies that are already member of the alliance. So this is an issue which is now discussed uh, and I expect decisions to be made uh, soon. How big a concern uh, is intelligence sharing? Is that a hurdle for some uh, allies, especially in light of the meeting we've heard reported about at the White House in which the president revealed uh, some sensitive information to the uh, Russian ambassador to the U.S. and to the Russian for uh, foreign minister? Intelligence sharing is an important part of the NATO cooperation uh, and I appreciate that uh, NATO allies and, and especially the United States uh, are sharing intelligence with NATO and other allies uh, almost every day and that is very important for the strength of uh, NATO uh, and I'm confident that all uh, NATO allies are able to handle uh, the, in, the intelligence they is, receive from uh, other allies and from uh, partners. The United States is weighing sending more military personnel to Afghanistan, the expectation being that NATO would match uh, whatever the U.S. were uh, to send. The U.S. saying it plans to make a decision on that after this meeting concludes uh, next week. If they do decide to send more troops to Afghanistan, how quickly could NATO uh, react in kind? So we can react quite quickly, but first we have to decide on how many troops we are going to have there. Uh, we have uh, approximately 13,000 troops now uh, 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 in Afghanistan. Half of them, approximately half of them are uh, U.S. troops and the other half are European, Canadian and uh, coming from partner countries. Uh, and we are now discussing uh, whether uh, we should uh, have a... Um, an increase, not very big increase, but an adjustment mm. of the force uh, levels. Uh, again, I expect decisions to be taken in the coming weeks. What is clear is that we will continue our military presence, uh, uh, train mission uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan, uh, and then we are looking into whether there is a need for uh, some increase in the troop uh, levels. Last question here. There was a huge ransomware attack last week. Uh, as you know, there was interference in the U.S presidential election. I imagine cybersecurity is becoming a bigger concern for you uh, at NATO. What is your greatest concern when it comes to cybersecurity and NATO's positioning to combat it? So cyber threats is something or threats are something we need to take really seriously because we have seen more sophisticated and more intense and more uh, uh, higher numbers or more and more higher frequency of uh, cyber attacks against NATO allies and against uh, NATO networks. 
And therefore, NATO is responding by significantly increasing our uh, cyber defense uh, capabilities. We have also decided that cyber t attacks can trigger what we call Article 5, our collective uh, defense goals. So an attack, uh, a cyber attack can be regarded as an attack on all uh, allies. Uh, we are also now establishing cyber as a military domain, meaning that we will have air, sea, mm. land and cyber as military, as I say, uh, operational domains. And then we also support allies uh, to help them improve their cyber defenses with joint exercises with the Center of Excellence in Tallinn, where we share technology, uh, best practices, and we always have to adapt and change because the cyber threat is constantly changing, so we have to be ready uh, to uh, respond. And that's also what we did last Friday, where we warned uh, all allies uh, on the mounting uh, uh, cyber attack we saw uh, last weekend.